and we are on. We say all praises be to the Creator, all power to His people. In the name of Yahshua, the Black Revolutionary Messiah, I greet you, my brothers and sisters, in the spirit of truth and the words of peace. Shalom Aleichem. Give a special salute to the Black Messiahs. Our motto is stop waiting for a Savior and be one. Stop waiting for a Savior and be one. This morning, on this lecture, we're going to keep it real simple, but yet we're going to take our time. God's people, stop being scared. God's people, stop being scared. We fight for everything else. But when it comes to standing up what we're supposed to fight for, we're scared. If somebody sits in your seat in church or somebody, you at the mall and somebody looks at you the wrong way, you ready to fight. You ready to pop the trunk. If somebody disrespects you, you will jump in the car. I mean, you're going their house behind. You'll jump in the car with tenant windows over some disrespect. But when it comes to fighting for your people, when it comes to standing up and fighting for what you're supposed to stand up for, the lives of these babies, the lives of these children, you start singing. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord. Nah, you just scared. Nah, you just scared. Now, there's some truth to that. There's some truth to that. Things you cannot handle. Yeah, God got to fight it. And I'm going to go into that. But the things you can fight, that's your responsibility. Because a lot of y'all take things out of context. If you're taking that, the battle's not yours, it's the Lord's out of context. And if you go to 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, it's talking about how your enemies will destroy themselves. It's talking about how sometimes your enemies will destroy themselves. That's what it's talking about. It ain't talking about you ain't supposed to fight. The whole Bible is about fighting. The whole Bible is about God's people fighting. Well, why don't you tell, why don't the pastors teach us that? Going back to that slave plantation theology. Besides people like the Reverend Nat Turner, and they never tell you that Nat Turner was a Reverend who led one of the most successful insurrections in American history, slave revolt. He, yeah. Um, they never tell you that Nat Turner was a preacher. But for the most part, they didn't want anybody to upset massive. Because if you started going around talking about standing up and fighting, oh, you're going to get everybody killed. You're going to get everybody killed. But let's, let's deal with what the Bible says. The prayer, the morning prayer, of the Black Messiah Underground Army soldiers comes from the 24th Division of Psalms. 
And I'm going to start with the eighth verse. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Even lift them up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Last week, we got into what it means when the Bible says you are gods. And we got into the Elohim, the strong ones, male and female. And how the Elohim is really the collective God force in the universe. The Elohim is really the collective God force of the universe. So today we're going to deal with just one aspect of that. And we're going to talk about what that means when it's time for war. What does that mean when it's time for war? And that brings us to what does the Lord of hosts mean? What does the Lord of hosts mean? What the Lord means is evident. We're talking about God. But when we talk about the Lord of hosts, what does host mean? That's God's army. That's God's army. So in the Hebrew tradition, when you see the Lord of hosts, we're talking about the head of God's army. We're talking about God as the head of his army. Heavenly army, earthly army, still functioning within the Elohim, the strong ones. We're talking about God's army because there are a lot of attributes given to God in the Bible, a lot of different names of God in the Bible. There's still one God. Well, we're talking about God being so great, God being so massive, God being everything. There are different attributes for different situations. So we're dealing with the Lord of hosts. In Hebrew, it means the word is for hosts is Zebiot, Zebiot, translated as Sebaot, Sebaot. The definition, according to the Bible dictionary, is this can, Lord of hosts, this can also be rendered the Lord Almighty. It represents God's power over nations and was closely tied to Shiloh, to the Ark of the Covenant and to prophecy. The title designates God as king and ruler of Israel, its armies, its temple, and the entire universe. So when it was time for war, when it was time for battle, the attribute that was utilized was the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. Let me give you a good example of that in the Bible. Let me give you a good example of that in the Bible. Go to Second Kings six. Chapter 16th verse. Elijah and his servant are surrounded. 
are surrounded by the enemy. The servant is afraid. The servant is afraid. But Elijah, Elijah tells him, and he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than be with him, with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray you, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around Elijah. God's army will protect you in the time of war. You just got to open your eyes. You just got to open your eyes. Now, I know some of y'all are saying, well, what does Jesus say? What does Jesus say? What did Jesus say about it? Let's deal with that. Go to Matthew 10th chapter, 34th, 34th verse. Matthew 10th verse. Think not that I have come to send peace on earth, I came not to send peace, but a sword. Do I need to say that again? Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. But see, some of y'all are scared to read that verse because it makes you think you're going to have to get up and fight. But in reality, that particular verse is talking about the sword of truth. The sword of truth. Because sometimes the most powerful weapon, and oftentimes the most powerful weapon, you can have. It's true. All you got to do is tell the truth. All you got to do is tell the truth. That's why Yahshua was crucified, by telling the truth, by telling the masses, you ain't got to bow down to Caesar. Caesar ain't God. We don't bow down to Caesar. We bow down to God. That's the sword of truth. Now, going to Luke 22nd chapter 36 verse. Yahshua said, but now you that have has a purse, let him take it. And likewise, his script. And he that has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. So y'all don't like to talk about that. Y'all don't like to talk about that because a lot of y'all are cowards. Now I've heard the scripture being talked about in different ways. Well, it wasn't talking about a sword sword. Sounds like it was talking about a sword to me. See, a lot of times, it's not what's in the Bible. It's the way you interpret what's in the Bible. If you interpret the Bible, you're looking for strength. You're about to go out in battle. You're going to interpret it one way. But if you're looking to be a coward, if you're looking to hide under the bed, if you're looking for an excuse not to stand up against the enemy, then you're going to interpret it another way. Then you're going to interpret a whole another way. So 
what we're talking about today is in the purpose of this message is for the warriors, not for the fearful, not for those who are scared, those who have faith. And in Black Messiah terminology, faith stands for fear ain't in this heart. Fear ain't in this heart. In our interpretation, that's what faith means. That's what faith means. So, what we are saying to you this morning, if you are part of God's army, if you represent the collective God force in the universe. You can't be afraid. You cannot be afraid. When you wake up in the morning, call on the Lord of hosts. That's why we say every morning, we give all praises to the Lord of hosts and ask for his guidance and protection today. Because in this world, you're gonna to have to fight. You're gonna to have to fight. And the most important weapon you can fight with is the truth. Look at Yahshua, who we call the black, some of y'all call Jesus, but his Hebrew name, his given name was Yahshua, meaning God will save us or God brings salvation. Surrounded by the Roman Empire. The great Roman Empire. And his weapon was the truth. You're going to have to fight in this world, brothers and sisters. Doesn't the Bible say the violent take it by force? We got to stop picking scriptures that make us weak. We got to stop quoting scriptures out of context that make us afraid to stand up in our communities. We got to start studying and meditating on scriptures that will make us strong and ready to battle. As always, we leave with the Black Messiah motto, stop waiting for a savior and be one. Shalom.